Exactly to hear the podcasting beast from the East with the Professor John Gotti, the King of RNG, the Troll Master, the Data Analyzer, Ninja, the Conqueror. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, the Terminator, the guy who is one of the greatest and most proficient readers of them all, Prophet Damas. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, Professor Omega, the Cleaner. You forgot the wise man wow. for your reigning, defending, undisputed podcasting champion, our <laughs> tribal beast, the head of the table. Your friend and mine, the Liberator, Los Jaquilo, the Pied Piper of podcasting, the Sultan of Squat, the Sanitizer, Doc Lisner. Knowledge, Lee. Well, how you doing, man? It's Friday. Ah, oh, man, I'm doing pretty good. Can't complain. We made it to another Friday. It's Friday again. Um, you know, uh, nothing. You know, sports just dies down. Um, you know, as we get closer to the Super Bowl, but yeah, that's I mean, why I, that's more of the NBA's fault, unfortunately. It is. It is. Um, which maybe next week we'll get into some nba news as we get closer to the trade deadline but today sir is all about football we have some hires we have some interviews uh, and then of course we have champ this is championship sunday it is um but let's start with the vikings getting their guy 40 year old general man 40 year old general manager Kwesi adolfo mensa um obviously this is kind of a, a dream come true of course. moment. Um, I think we all hope to one day get the job of our dreams. And I think Adolfo Mensa is, is going to do a great job. I, I think this is the first step in many for people getting away from hiring people with quote unquote experience and going with the guy who they just believe can do the job. I that understand. Makes uh, that makes sense. I mean, to quote former WWE champion Alberto Del Rio, he said it was his destiny. Or, I mean, we're quoting, um, you know, George McFly. I think you're my dens- density. Yes. Oh, no, I meant my destiny. That's hilarious. Um, But uh, Adolfo Mensu mentioned the job is about making decisions and building conscious or consensus in the building combining different sources of information into one answer and having everybody behind it. Um, and I can understand that because that's kind of what I'm doing with my flag football team at the moment. So I get it. Uh, he said, along those lines, I don't think there's many people who are more qualified than I am. Just my background on Wall Street, having the emotional stability to make those decisions at a high level, be accountable for yourself and kind of learning and growing that from that standpoint, that's education that I'll never fully appreciate. Mm-hmm. Um, so I just think that he's going to be a good, good fit. Um, and he, as he says, really believed that he was meant to be the general manager of the Vikings. And it's it just something that, like you said, destined to happen. I think, you know, we kind of talked about this with uh, certain coaches getting the hire for your favorite teams. And they have that initial press conference and mm-hmm. you like what they're hearing and or what they're saying. And it, you know, and it motivates you and it makes you have, you know, high hopes for the season to progress. And whether or not it turns out in your favor is a totally different kind of story. But he's doing a lot to get Viking Nation behind him early on. He sounds hype, bro. Mm -hmm. Um, But again, I mean, we just have to wait and see what he's going to do with his uh, coaching decisions and see what they're going to do for the draft and things like that. But I mean, as far as, you know, first impressions, I mean, kudos. Yeah. Yeah. And I'll say just his background in the NFL alone, uh, working with San Francisco and in the Browns, uh, when I think about those two organizations over the last couple of years, and the GMs that he worked under, I think he gained a lot of experience. Um, Obviously those two franchises turned it around. Um, So I think his work as a football. 
conference championships I mean, game. <laughs> true. Um, <laughs> you know, respect on their names, Doc. <laughs> I mean, but you look at the Browns. I mean, the people that they've been able to bring in, um, although it hasn't, um, you know, shown on the field just yet, but the people they've been able to bring in and the contracts and the draft picks they've been able to make, um, you know, John Lynch and Andrew Barry, respectively, I believe this guy um, gained a lot of that exp- expertise. And I agree. I'm looking forward to seeing him bring that to Minnesota because they desperately need it. Um, but on the other fronts here, the Baltimore Ravens finally got their new defensive coordinator um, actually taking um, a college guy, you know, a, a, a college defense coordinator, uh, Mike McDonald from Michigan, um, and he's going to be the team's new defensive coordinator. Um, you know, during his, you know, I guess this is somebody that used to be a, a guy there in, in Baltimore uh, during his initial seven seasons with the team. It was evident, uh, John Harbaugh says, that his leadership, intelligence, and passion would earn him an opportunity to be a defensive coordinator in the NFL. Um, you know, Mike continuously proven himself, including when he led one of the country's best defenses at Michigan last year. He's a proven play caller who knows our system well. He also mm-hmm. fully understands the standard of playing defense in Baltimore. Uh, bringing a guy back who, you know, kind of going to install that old defense that the Ravens used to have between 2014 and 2020. Um, I think it's something that they really need to get back to because you remember, I mean, the Baltimore Ravens defense used to be really feared. Yeah, um, I, mean, I think the last two or three years <laughs> kind of gone downhill. Yeah, I mean, but again, it goes back to adjustments and they didn't mm-hmm. really have, you know, those type of linchpins, linchpins on the defensive side. Um, I believe they had one person, but then he ended up going to the Browns for like a season. Mm-hmm. I don't know where he is now. Uh, I believe it's Kruger. Hmm. That sounds right. I I can't confirm that. Um, but it depends. I mean, it might have been one of those situations where he was just a position coach. And then, like, the only reason you leave a team is to get, for the most part, is to get a promotion. Um, you know, you either become a position coach or coordinator or, or something. Yeah, it like was that. Paul Kruger, and he actually retired in 2016. <clears throat> and that makes sense. And, and that makes sense. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. And I was right. Um, he did go to he did he did go to Cleveland, and then he mm-hmm. went to uh, New Orleans for like half a season. Gotcha. Well, I'll we'll have to keep an eye on this Ravens development, see if it turns the defense around. Um, but with other developments, obviously, we talked you know, earlier this week about Sean Payton's exit. Uh, the Saints have put in a request to interview Byron Leftwich, uh, which is very interesting because, again, is. I personally think that Dennis Allen should get the job, but I understand well, them doing their due diligence. Dennis Allen is also being interviewed for the role as well, too. Um, mm-hmm. And I want to say Paul Allen is the other person. Well, Dennis Allen, there's um, – let me see. I just had it over here. Dang it. Where are you? Where are you? Yikes. There we go. Dennis Allen, left wish. It's Aaron Glenn. Aaron Glenn. Uh, Aaron Glenn is the Lions defensive coordinator. So those are the three people that they've interviewed so far. Um, I'm Like I said, I'm really interested to see some of the other teams. I, I didn't expect this job to be open. So um, I don't think Byron Leftwich would fit in New Orleans. If I'm him, I'm looking at this opportunity as somewhat of a trap um i probably would go somewhere where you know you're gonna at least have some cap flexibility like this is a tough job um to take um because you know there's gonna be have to be some turnover to actually produce a, a winning team i'm sorry serious xm radio i can't talk to you right now i'm doing a show with john Gotti, and now that is not an advertisement that's me <laughs> telling them to stop spamming me um so I'm interested to see the Saints and see what they do. But if it's me, the guys already know Dennis Allen. They they believe in Dennis Allen. It's already been a shock that Sean Payton left. You don't want to send Dennis Allen out as well. I personally think that in order to protect the franchise and not take a step backward and have to go into a full rebuild, you keep Dennis Allen. 
I <clears throat> I actually think that this is more of a a act of kindness towards Byron Leftwich. I think they're actually going to have Dennis Dennis Allen get promoted up to head coach. I just think they have to fill a quota, quote unquote, to interview a certain amount of people. I guess that would be the Rooney Rule. I guess. Yes, it is the Rooney Rule. Yeah, I guess that that would be that would be it. Um, you know, yeah, I guess that that makes sense. Um, because then they they would get fined and all that extra stuff. So that makes perfect sense. Uh, finally, with the last news here about hood coaching vacancies and GM vacancies, uh, Patriots offensive coordinator Josh McDaniels has been requested from the Las Vegas Raiders. Um, I personally don't think Josh is ever going to leave New England because he knows that Bill Belichick's days are numbered. Um, yeah. And, you know, it's kind of just like you you just got to wait, you know? Well, but it's good for them to put in the Think about it like though. this, though. He would rather inherit the Patriots' helm right. than have to rebuild all over again. Yeah, even though the, the Raiders have a, a great team, uh, something that I think Josh McDaniels didn't have a lot of in um, Denver. Mm-hmm. Um, they have a great team that, you know, obviously management is pretty good. Um, I just don't think he's going to leave New England. I, I think, you know, you think about it, like, I, I would just wait. Because, you know, Bill Belichick is pretty much going to pull a Bill. Oh, you're making a face. Oh, I thought you were saying Josh McDaniels accepts the job but as I'm talking, you know. <laughs> uh, Bill Belichick is going to pull a Bill Parcells and uh, just kind of turn the job over, you know, to Josh McDaniels on his way out. I mean, that's, that, the way I, that's the way yeah. I look at it. There's I mean, thing. we really haven't had that in football in a it's long very time. Very rare. Very, very rare. Um, which I feel like the same thing that Bruce Arians is going to do. Um, if those two coordinators stay on in Tampa, it's like, hey, one of you is going to get a job. Um, but if not, I think it'll be maybe a Harold Godwin, um, somebody who, um, you know, somebody who has never gotten the chance. Um, mm-hmm. You know, something like that, I, I think, uh, will happen. So we'll have to keep an eye on that. Johnny, we got these. Uh, we got Championship Sunday coming up. Both yeah. games. We we Sunday are Sunday afternoon and evening. <laughs> um, but we got Cincinnati heading to Kansas City one more time. Uh, last time these two met, Cincinnati got the W. They got the um, gritty win. Yeah, even though they were pretty much giving us like the biggest scare at the end with, with the spiking at, you know, two and three seconds left uh, with a backup quarterback. Um, but they won it 34-31. They really battled it out. Um, Freaking Jamar Chase ran up and down the field all over the bank, all over the stopped. Chiefs. Uh, he could not be yeah, yeah. Um, I am going to choose the Bengals, not just off the strength of the Madden curse, um, but I just think that the media is too hype on the Chiefs. Um, as I mentioned, I didn't think the Chiefs got a challenge the first week of the playoffs when they got, well, the second week of the playoffs when they played the Steelers. Or that was the first week of the playoffs. That was the first Lockhart. week. Yeah. It felt like they had a bye. It was, that's how bad it was. I felt like they were on a bye. It was technically um, a bye for them. It was. Uh, they tro- destroyed, you know, the, the, the Steelers. And then I mentioned that I thought the Bills would win, uh, which the Bills should have won, but that's neither here nor there. Mm-hmm. They lost. It was, it was uh, nothing beyond their control, unfortunately. It was just but the challenge, control. the challenge that I mentioned was there, um, and I think the Bengals, whose defense is really, really coming around um, late in the season, I think the Bengals are going to get it done. Joe Burrow turns the franchise around and takes the Bengals not only in their first playoff win their first time probably in the conference championships in some time in the 90s um, but i think joe burrow takes the Bengals to the super bowl doc saying that the clock hasn't struck 12 for cinderella nope 
But Doc, I mean, the Chiefs have been clicking on all cylinders. Their offense yep. is still legit. The fact that Patrick Mahomes has been throwing to more than just Tyreek. It's not the and offense. Travis. You know, you know, dang well it's not the offense. You could skip but that and go straight to the defense. <laughs> the defense during the season I mentioned had been playing excellent. Ooh, during the uh, season, their front sure. four has been playing tremendously. The yeah. biggest issue that they have right now is their secondary. And we don't know what's going to happen with uh, Honey Badger, but we will find out, hopefully by today, <laughs> whether or not he's uh, in or out. Um, I don't even know if it matters because, I mean, that, but, it's not I even mean, him. It's the other guys. It is. It is the other guys. But despite all those defensive woes, though, I mean, that offense cannot be trifled with. Mm-hmm. But with all that said, Doc, my decision, who's going to the Super Bowl to represent the AFC? Kitty goes meow. I'm going. Kitty goes Cincinnati. meow. Um, I think they have to just. I think they just have to look back. I mean, they need team... to. They need to, and they need to make Patrick Mahomes very uncomfortable early, and then keep yeah, it that I, way. I think they'll look at that Bucks Super Bowl, you know, matchup, and and I think you're going to see something similar. Or you're going to see how, um, I always go back to this, how the Chargers played the Ravens that one year, shutting down Lamar, um, mm-hmm. you know. Um, but I'm going to say this last thing, um, and then we're going to move on to the next game, and you can you can chime in. But I think Joe Burrow is exactly what the Bengals hoped that that bum Carson Palmer would be all along. Nope, nope. I'm just ready to go to the NFC Championship game on that one. <laughs> Somehow, some way. Yeah, yeah, no, nope, yeah. nope. Let's move on before you get down sportsman. Like, let's move on. There we go. Uh, well, we got the <laughs> San Francisco 49ers headed to LA to play the Rams Sunday night, 6 30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, I think it, I read that San Francisco has beaten the Rams six straight times, which. I don't like that particular statistic um, when they start, you know, kind of meddling that. And of course, we had the stupid question of, you know, is uh, Kyle Shanahan in your in your head, McVay? And I, I don't like that at all. Um, but this is a really even matchup. We don't know who's in, who's out just yet for the Boy Honors, but the Rams are healthy, um, despite the fact that they almost blew it against the Bucks. Uh, technically, they did blow the game against the 49ers, um, you know, at the end of the season, uh, pretty much putting them in this predicament that they're in. Um, but just by the tail of the tape, the 49ers are playing better than their record, you know, is suggesting. I mean, seventh yeah. in offense, third in defense, 12th in passing, seventh in rushing. Um, but they just don't – it's just Jimmy G. He just doesn't play consistently. Um, and that's the part that I'm worrying about because Jimmy G by no means is Tom Brady. He's not going to be able to put his head down on the bench and look at the tablet the same way Tom did last week. So they can't be falling behind too early and think they're going to come back and win this game, you know, two times in a row. You know, it's just not happening. Uh, yeah, I'll say it. Jimmy G, yes, he was behind Tom Brady, and yes, he can look at the tablet just as well, but I don't think that's going to happen. Exactly. Slamming it down. Slamming it down. So uh, but with that, that, Johnny, um, I am going to go with the Rams. Um, although I want desperately San Francisco versus Cincinnati, I think that would be the best game. Because um, I, I just want I want the underdogs to win. And I think the 49ers are the underdog. Even if the point system doesn't show it, I don't know what the points are, but um, I just feel like you want the underdogs to win. Um, I can understand that. But I think the Rams, although they're this close, I think they're going to stamp out the 49ers. It, it might not be close, or it might be close. It might be another close game, but I think the Rams this is will a figure NFC out a way to win. West it. game. It's yeah. going to be close. It's, yeah. <laughs> Again, it's either going to be close or a blowout. There's no in between. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm going to go with the Rams. 
Uh, McVay has to get this done, man. Uh, Stafford needs this. OBJ needs it. Aaron Donald needs it to solidify himself as one of the greatest defensive if, players. If of the all Rams time. doesn't win this game, the overrated chance will be raining upon them throughout the entire offseason. The super yeah. team in the NFL mm -hmm. logic will be dead. Yeah. It's going to be tough to bounce back from. Um, it's going to question everything, you know. Um, uh, it's going to question everything. That's mm -hmm. all I can say. Um, but who are you going with this, sir? You know, Doc? Uh-oh. I hate to do it's this. Tough. It's tough. You going to go really tie? Do. No, we can't. There's no tie. <laughs> the playoffs. Come on. <laughs> we may go into two overtimes, though. But yeah, I can understand that. You I'm going read. with the 49ers. Hey, that's a good choice. Again, the uh, defense is legit. Mm -hmm. Their rushing is really good. And Debo, they have playing. Debo. He's playing. Yeah, he's playing. He's uh, playing. He's playing. I he wants you. to go to the Super Bowl. He of course. wants to go to the Super Bowl. The fact that we would have Jamar Chase, rookie, first round. Joe Burrow, second year, first round. And Debo, first year. Uh, second year, first round, like that's that'd be ridiculous. Mm -hmm. I would love that, but yeah, I'm I guess going it also with the 49ers. Depends. Um, I Trent Williams, seen, also, though, I'm comparing this to like where the offense wasn't you know all that cracked up to be, but their defense is like locked down. It reminded me of that 20 uh 2008 Giants team, yeah, like they weren't the best offensively, but that defense locked things down, yeah. And they were the road warriors, and I see that same thing happening here. So I'm going to go with the 49ers. I got it. And, and it'll continue the notion of defense winning championships. Gotcha. All right, which is typically how it goes. I mean, you think about last year, the Bucks were, what, top five defense. Um, you know, the Chiefs were, well, the Bucks were top five, the offense and defense last mm -hmm. year. Um, but the Chiefs were top five offense, uh, probably top 10 to top 15 yeah, defense. Like, it's like they were um, mid for the defense. Yeah. Um, when we look here, you know, I'm thinking to myself, you know, top 10 defense in the 49ers, you know, versus, um, you know, both defenses in the AFC are, you know, bottom 15. But um, I'm just interested to see Joe Burrow. Versus Jimmy G. I don't want to see Patrick Mahomes again because it's, 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 <laughs> if it's Patrick Mahomes, then I want to see him versus the Rams. I want to see, see you know. I wasn't even thinking of that. I was just I thinking am. of which team, when they go head to head, who I feel like would actually win. Like I know a lot of I people mean, don't want because because we kind of had that whole issue with Steph Curry, and I'm not here to get into basketball with this, but like you know, he won the championship, and then he got back to the finals again, but then people really didn't like him anymore because they were being really sympathetic to LeBron kind of thing. Like, that's kind of what's happening with Patrick Mahomes. People don't want to see him back in the, in the Super Bowl anymore because he's been in there for the past two years, so they're, you right. know, going through uh, Mahomes exhaustion. <laughs> well, I think, I think the only, only benefit that I have from it is that, you know, the Bucks were able to beat Patrick Mahomes. So, you yeah. know, it, it helped me out tremendously budget everybody else it helped me out <laughs> you know what i'm saying so i was uh pretty good with that but uh well we'll see i mean you, know, you got the you got the niners you know i'm taking the rams uh we'll go ahead and see you know what happens in this situation um but you know that's going to happen you know that game's going to be on fox um obviously the afc championship game will be on cbs uh so we'll go ahead and wait and see but Johnny, I know the people heard this podcast on their favorite podcast platform. But if they didn't, they can always go to our website at www.debateamongstfriends.com to review this episode as well as all the previous. Be sure to tune in next week as we go over the winners of this game and the previous game, the all the games. Hopefully we get some hirings. Hopefully we don't get any more firings. No more surprise retirements. And we'll come back for the news, the analysis, and the reads.